All right, so this is a self-sealing membrane right here. There's a couple of different types out there. This one has a granule on it. That allows you to walk on it, but it also allows it to stay out in the sun a little longer. We like to run it over and up the wall so it's added protection as a flashing, but it still has to be flashed. Now, in areas where you get heavy snow, it's important that you bring a self-sealing membrane from the roof down onto the fascia board, sealing that gap. Now let's talk about flashing. This is actually a drip edge. The first big problem that I see roofers do a lot of is they take the drip edge and they gently put it against the fascia board and then they nail it. Then they take their shingles and they put them on top and they make it flush with the edge here. Those are two no-nos. I'm just going to tack it. Again, I'm going to do it wrong, so I'm going to place it flush with the edge. Okay, so now you can see that it's all flush with the edge and the drip edge is touching the fascia board. Now, depending on wind and rain conditions, when the water runs down the roof, let's watch what happens as it comes to here. Now, with driving rain, the water is going to run right off the roof. See? But when it starts to slow down, see what happens? See how it's sticking, going right under and hitting that drip edge right there? Yeah. Getting pulled right in. That's surface tension, pulling the water against the surface. The bubbles will grab the fascia board, run down the fascia board, and shorten the life of it. So that's a no-no. All right, let me show you the way I like to do it. First of all, we're going to take the drip edge and slide it out, keeping, the, keeping it tight to the roof. I'm going to slide it out enough so I can put my fingers in there. OK, pull my fingers out, and I have a space. All right, so what I want to do is we want to nail it. We'll kind of keep the nail about in the center right here. That keeps our flashing laying flat. And nail it about every 16 inches. All right, this is an architectural shingle. There are also what is called three tab shingles, where there's th two slots for individual tabs. Architectural shingles are spaced a little different as they go up the roof. This manufacturer makes a starter course. The starter course has this tar right here. It's activated by heat. I don't want the joints to line up, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and cut something off of this. OK, lay it down, put it on the roof with the sticky side down. I'm going to place it, bring it in, so it just touches my flashing, and I'm going to pull it down a half an inch. Now I'm going to take another starter again, flip it upside down. Now what I want to do is I want to gently bring it against that shingle. I want to eyeball it so that it's even. Tack it. How low? Right make here? Make it flat. That's good, yep. And one more right here. Make sure the nail is down tight and flat. Okay. And the next thing I need to do is add another piece of flashing right here on top of the courses as we go, and that's called step flashing. I'm going to nail it high. Okay, now we're ready to start our coursing as we go up. And I only need one nail. Now we take the next shingle that we cut, lay it in place, small piece of shingle. Okay, so now we're getting our next shingle. Okay, so now let's see what happens when we pour the water on the edge of the roof when it's away and over hump. Ready? Yep. So you can see how the water is just going right away and falling off of the edge. It's not being sucked down around. All right, good. So I want you to get this roof done, and I'll come back later and check on you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.